Today's topic of discussion is drug therapy for heart failure. Hello and welcome to Pharmacomania. I am Dr. Shahnaz Malik and we are going to discuss drug therapy of heart failure. So what is heart failure? Heart failure is the condition where uh, heart is unable to pump out a sufficient amount of the blood to meet metabolic demand of the tissue and also unable to receive back because every time each stole uh, some residual blood remain in the ventricle. So there are various terminologies for heart failure like congestive heart failure, myocardial insufficiency, cardiac insufficiency and cardiac failure. All terminologies are used, used as for uh, heart failure. Now types of heart failure. There are various types of heart failure like uh, low cardiac output failure, high cardiac output failure, left sided heart failure and right sided heart failure. Low cardiac output failure is the most common type of heart failure in which metabolic demand of the body is normal but uh, heart is not able to pump out to meet that metabolic demand. So it, it can occur in uh, hypertension, myocardial infarction, diabetes mellitus etc. High cardiac output failure where metabolic demand of the body is increased in various conditions like anemia and hyperthyroidism. These are the rare condition. Left sided failure and right sided failure. These both conditions cannot be separated from each other because left sided failure causes right sided failure or vice versa. So this is the uh, common, uh, these are, they cannot be separated from each other. Now low output failure where the metabolic demand of the body uh, are within the normal limit but the heart is not able to pump the, to meet the de demand. Etiologies are uh, myocardial infarction, hypertension, angina, ventricular tachycardia, diabetes mellitus and hyperthyroidism may involve right sided failure and left sided failure or both. So high cardiac output failure where uh, metabolic demand of the tissue is excessive. So uh, etiology are hyperthyroidism, anemia and atrovenous shunt. It should be treated by correcting underlying cause. Left ventricular failure is the true life threatening emergency when pressure become uh, too high the fluid portion of the blood is forced into the alveoli, decrease oxygenation uh, capacity of lung occur when left ventricle fail as uh, an effective forward pump big pressure of blood into the pulmonary circulation cannot eject all the blood delivered from the right heart left atrium pressure rises increase pressure in pulmonary vein and capillaries and pulmonary edema can occur so this is the rough diagram of the left ventricular failure. Whenever left ventricle is not able to pump out the blood, back pressure occur in the left atrium and pulmonary vein. So blood pressure uh, rises in the pulmonary vein and pulmonary capillary and pulmonary, pulmonary edema and congestion can occur. Now sign and symptom of left ventricular failure. Severe respiratory distress occur due to increase pressure in pulmonary vein and capillaries and increase pulmonary edema and congestion evidence of orthopnea dyspnea history of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea severe apprehension agitation confusion resulting from hypoxia cyanosis diaphoresis can occur resulting from sympathetic overactivity Pulmonary congestion causes uh, present uh, often present with uh, rails, ronchi, and wheezing. All these signs and symptoms of the left ventricular failure. So whenever right heart failure, uh, when uh, right heart is not able to pump out the blood into uh, pulmonary artery, big pressure rises in right atrium and through superior and inferior vena cava pressure rises in peripheral organ. So right sided failure present with peripheral edema and jugular venous distension. 
so etiology of uh, right uh, heart failure is like uh, acute myocardial infarction or pulmonary diseases like uh, copd and fibrosis which resist to receive blood from the left uh, right atrium uh, ventricle so increase the back pressure into the right atrium and increase superior as well as inferior vena cava pressure and increase jugular venous pressure so whenever right uh, ventricle is not able to pump out the blood then remaining blood in the right ventricle will uh, back pressure will gives back pressure to right vent atrium and it causes increase the pressure in superior and inferior vena cava causes peripheral sign and symptoms occur like peripheral venous pressure will increase ascites due to enlargement of liver and spleen distended jugular vein due to directly connected to superior vena cava anorexia and complaint of gi distress swelling of feet and hands so these all are sign of the peripheral edema and congestion so whenever left ventricular uh, failure occur it affect to right ventricle as well so let's see first whenever left ventricle is not able to pump out the blood then remaining blood in the left ventricle give back pressure to left atrium and pulmonary vein increase the pressure of pulmonary vein and pulmonary capillary so pulmonary congestion and edema can occur so further uh, blood from the right ventricle will not accepted by lung so back pressure occur in right ventricle and right atrium and this pressure will uh, transfer to superior as well as inferior vena cava so increase the pressure of superior and inferior vena cava and congestion of the peripheral organ as well as peripheral edema can occur so whenever left ventricular failure occur so it will affect to right ventricle as well now compensatory mechanism are there to uh, compensate the cardiac failure so in order to maintain normal cardiac output several compensatory mechanism play role so compensatory enlargement of the heart to form cardiac hypertrophy cardiac dilatation or both tachycardia due to activation of neurohumeral system release of norepinephrine atrial natriuretic peptides and activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism these all are mechanism to counteract heart failure so there are three compensatory mechanism to counteract heart failure like uh, neurohumeral system renin angiotensin aldosterone system and ventricular hypertrophy these three are three mechanisms are there to compensate heart failure this is the compensatory mechanism uh, initially it helpful to compensate cardiac failure but, but after some time it causes worsen the condition and causes more cardiac failure so first of all when initially uh, acute heart failure occurs so it reduces the force of contraction and cardiac output so in response of decreased force of contraction and cardiac output increase sympathetic discharge so increase sympathetic di discharge increase adrenaline and noradrenaline from uh, body and causes vasoconstriction occur and due to vasoconstriction causes increase preload and afterload and due to beta 1 activation increase force of contraction and increase heart rate so initially increase cardiac output compensation and later on worsen heart failure via decompensation so this beta activation also helpful for cardiac remodeling second is the due to decrease force of contraction and cardiac output decrease renal perfusion so in result of ren decrease renal perfusion there will be two activity occur first is the increase renin release increase angi angiotensin 1 release and angiotensin 2 release and increase aldosterone causes cardiac remodeling occur 
and due to angiotensin 2 is increased causes increased preload and afterload and reduce in GFR causes sodium and water retention and ultimately edema can occur. So due to cardiac remodeling causes back pressure occur and due to sodium and water retention edema can occur. Ultimately worsen the symptoms like pulmonary congestion, hepatic enlargement and peripheral congestion. Now, neurohumeral system which affect in cardiac uh, compensation, stimulation by decreased perfusion causes increased hormones like epinephrine and vasopressin. So, increased epinephrine causes increased uh, force of contraction due to activation of beta 1 receptor, increased rate and pressure of the heart and vasoconstriction occur due to alpha 1 receptor. Ultimately, after some time, uh, beta 1 receptor due to down regulation decrease the effect of the beta 1 receptor and causes decrease the force of contraction and cardiac output. Vasopressin enzymes um, uh, hormones like uh, uh, their uh, pituitary hormone and uh, mild vasoconstriction and water uh, retention can occur. Renin angiotensin system. So decrease uh, renal perfusion causes decrease GFR and increase sodium and water retention and causes edema occur. Uh, so increase the preload and another mechanism is increase the renin from the kidney and um, increase angiotensin 1 as well as angiotensin 2 which causes vasoconstriction occur and uh, uh, again it helpful in cardiac remodeling. Initially it is helpful but after some time it worsens the cardiac failure. Uh, ventricular hypertrophy is also one of the uh, compensatory mechanism. After long term compensation, increase the size of the heart due to increase in workload and in, uh, in the cardiac muscle. So, uh, shape of the heart is changed to the globular and ventricular hypertrophy can occur. Now, goal of pharmacotherapy in the heart failure is aim to uh, at diminishing the compensatory mechanism of low cardiac output failure and also improving contractility of heart. Relief congestion, low cardiac output symptoms and restore cardiac performance and arrest or reversal of disease progression or prolongation of the survival. These are the goals for the pharmacotherapy. So, to achieve our goal, uh, we can prescribe following therapy for the heart failure. Like first group is positive inotropic drug like cardiac glycosides, bipyridine or phosphodiesterase inhibitor, beta adrenergic agonist. All these drugs uh, are increase the force of contraction of heart and increase cardiac output. Second group is drug without inotropic effect like vasodilators. SE inhibitors, diuretics, beta blocker, and vasopressin receptor antagonists. These all drugs are uh, not, uh, they are not uh, inotropic drugs, but they are uh, affecting by decrease the load on the heart. Inotropic drugs are like uh, digoxin. Phosphodiesterase inhibitor and beta adrenergic agonist. These all drugs are positive anotropic drug, increase contractility of heart and increase cardiac output. Now, other group is diuretic. Uh, drugs are like Lasix, hydrochlorothiazide, and spironolactone. These all drugs are inhibit sodium and water reabsorption into the kidney and decrease body water and salt retention and reduce blood pressure. Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, it inhibit conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is responsible for vasoconstriction and increased blood pressure. So, it inhibit conversion of angiotensin 2, ultimately reduce blood pressure and uh, reduce workload of the heart. It also reduces aldosterone secretion and reduce salt and water retention and resulting in blood pressure decrease and heart pumping become easier. 
vasodilators uh, like uh, it widen the blood vessel and therefore allow more, more blood flow and relaxation of the smooth muscle ves uh, of the blood vessel and widen the blood vessel causes lower systolic blood pressure now positive inotropic drug like digitalis it is increases the force of contraction of the heart it is also called as cardiac glycoside and it is discovered by william bethery this figure shows normal ionic moment of contraction of cardiac muscle so this is voltage sensitive l type of calcium channel where calcium enter into the cell and it also stimulate increase release of calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum and now it exit from sodium calcium exchanger three molecule of sodium enter into the cell and one molecule of calcium will exit from the cell now this is another exchanger sodium potassium exchanger where three molecule of sodium will exit and two molecule of potassium enter into the cardiac cell this is the normal ionic moment of the cardiac muscle now a uh, cellular mechanism of digitalis uh, so cardiac glycoside uh, are bind with sodium potassium adipase pump and it inhibit sodium potassium adipase pump so inhibit the exit of sodium so intracellular sodium will increase concentration of intracellular sodium will increase so now sodium will exchange uh, with calcium sodium exchanger and Uh, sodium exit through this pump and calcium enter through this pump so this pump become reverse uh, earlier sodium was enter from this pump and calcium were exiting now it become reverse so sodium is exiting and calcium is entering another source of calcium is l type of calcium channel where calcium enter through a type of calcium channel and also increase the release of calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum so intracellular calcium concentration is increased and causes increased cardiac contraction and increased force of contraction and cardiac output now gross effect of digitalis on heart is increase uh, ventricular ejection increase cardiac output decrease to end systolic and end diastolic cardiac size increase renal perfusion overall uh, decrease sympathetic tone and decrease renin angiotensin system stimulation so this is the left ventricular curve this is the left ventricular curve in normal heart heart failure and after digitalis these are the graph a b and c a is in normal um, heart b is in heart failure and c is after digitalis this graph is plotted against stroke volume and left ventricular filling pressure so there are major determinant of the cardiac function are preload which is ventricular and diastolic volume afterload which is myocardial contractility and stroke volume which is measures of left ventricular performance it is plotted against left ventricular filling pressure and stroke volume the resulting curve is known as the left ventricular function curve so in a line this is the normal left ventricular function curve in failing heart and in after digitalis and y line is the minimum cardiac output which is required to meet normal metabolic demand of the body so according to frank starling law the stroke volume is increased as preload or left ventricular filling pressure it is increased till 15 mmhg it is left ventricular filling pressure increase up to 15 mmhg and beyond this point it is plate to phase if it is reaches up to the performance is reaches up to 25 mmhg up to 25 mmhg then there must be pulmonary edema so heart failure increase the peripheral 
in heart failure increase peripheral resistance and decrease cardiac contractility which provide depress the ventricular function curve because the curve is failing heart is lower the plateau lower the plateau phase which lower the volume value of stroke output and down shift of curve down shift of curve from a to b that preload is same preload is 15 mm h it is same in graph a as well as graph b but left ventricular filling pressure stroke volume preload left ventricular filling pressure is same 15 to um, uh, 15 mm h but the curve is drop from uh, line y drop from y the curve b is preload increased up to 25 mmhg from 15 mmhg as compensatory mechanism there will be only marginal improvement in the stroke volume on the contrary at this value of the preload there would be exudation of fluid in alveoli and pulmonary edema can occur but after digital is treatment this b graph is shift toward the c due to decrease peripheral resistance and increase the force of contraction of the heart now cardiac cardiac effect of digital is it abolishes the sympathetic overactivity increase contractility of heart and increase cardiac output and shorten cardiac systole so more time will provide to ventricular rest and filling pressure filling reduce heart rate by sodium potassium atypase pump inhibition and restore vagal tone overall effect of the digital is it improvement in ventricular performance without significant increase oxygen requirement it decrease conduction velocity of av node and purkinje fibers and prolong effect effective refractory failure on changes in ecg are are decrease amplitude and inversion of t wave inversion of t wave prolongation of uh, pr interval and uh, shortening of qt prolongation and depress st segment in toxic dose so extra cardiac effect of digital is in blood on the blood vessel in normal individual direct mild vasoconstriction and increased peripheral resistance in heart failing patient oppose compensatory sympathetic overactivity decrease peripheral resistance and venous return and no prominent effect on blood vessel in kidney diuresis occur due to improvement in renal perfusion in chf patient and in uh, git anorexia nausea vomiting and diarrhea can occur in cns uh, disorientation hallucination visual disturbance and color perception changes can occur other uses of digital is other than chf are atrial fibrillation atrial flutter and paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia in all these uh, fibrillation and flutter we can use digital is pharmacokinetic of digoxin is the oral absorption is 60 to 80% plasma protein binding 25% uh, and duration of action on say 15 to after 15 to 30 minute and peak achieved after 2 to 5 hours and duration total duration 2 to 6 hours and plasma half life is 40 hours it is a long half life and therapeutic concentration is 0.5 to 1.4 nanogram per ml if it is more than 2 nanogram per ml then it is toxic concentration so daily maintenance dose is 0.125 to 0.5 mg and uh, daily elimination is 35 percentage and route of administration is uh, um, uh, route of elimination is renal uh, excretion and route of administration is oral or iv now adverse effect of uh, digital is our extra cardiac uh, adverse effect uh, like uh, it it has very low safety margin 
so uh, GIT as well as CNS and endocrinal side effect can see GIT side effect like anorexia, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, fatigue, malaise can see and CNS side effect like headache, mental confusion, restlessness, hyperemia, disorientation, psychosis and visual disturbance uh, due to CNS disturbance and gynecomastia due in male is due to endocrinal disturbance. Now cardiac uh, adverse effect due to digitalis are there are almost all type of the arrhythmia occur like pulses bigeminous, nodal and ventricular extrasystole, ventricular tachycardia, fibrillation, partial or complete heart block. These all are the arrhythmias which is occur due to digitalis. The treatment of uh, arrhythmias are like tachyarrhythmia, potassium infusion 20 millimole per hour ventricular arrhythmia, lidocaine or phenytoin intravenously, supraventricular arrhythmia, propranolol can be given. For AV block and bradycardia, atropine 0.6 to 1.2 mg intramuscularly, digibind antibodies against decoxin 40 mg, while neutralize the 0.6 uh, mg of decoxin antibody. So now contraindication of the glycosides, hypokalemia, enhanced digitalis toxicity because uh, digital is bind with the sodium adipase pump. So in hypokalemia, it enhances the toxicity, renal and hepatic diseases, myocardial infarction, hypothyroidism, slower elimination of the decoxin. So it should be avoided in hypothyroidism, Hoffman, Parkinson, White syndrome. These all are condition where digitalis should be avoided. Doses of digitalis, there are uh, three type of doses, slow digitalization, rapid digitalization and emergency IV digitalization. First is the low digitalization in mild to moderate cases 0.125 mg to 0.25 mg uh, daily maintenance doses given and response does not occur then increase the dose 0.375 to 0.5 mg by next week. Rapid oral digitalization 0.5 to 1 mg state followed by 0.25 mg 6 hourly and third dose is emergency dose where it is uh, rarely practiced nowadays. Now drug interaction with digitalis. Some drug which enhance the effect of digitalis and cardiotoxicity occur. Drugs like uh, loop diuretic, thiazide diuretic and corticosteroid which decrease the level of potassium and enhance the digital uh, digitalis toxicity. Other drug like amiodarone, quinidine, verapamil, tetracycline and erythromycin which displace the digitalis from protein binding site and increase the toxicity. Uh, calcium salt uh, gives synergistic action. Catecholamine succinylcholine causes arrhythmia. Now, decrease the digitalis effect uh, drugs like uh, antacid, sucralfet, uh, and neomycin, which decrease the absorption of the decoxin and reduce the effect of decoxin. But another drug like enzyme inducer like uh, phenytoin and phenobarbitone, which enhance the metabolism of digitalis and reduce the effect of digitalis. Hyperthyroidism causes increased renal clearance of digitalis and reduce the effect of digitalis. And cholesteramine causes decrease hepato enterohepatic circulation and causes uh, circulation and decrease the effect of digitalis. Thank you for watching the video. Other drugs for the CHF we will see in the second part of the CHF.